Welcome back, everyone. Today we are still at Kevin's house. It's been three weeks. He won't let me leave. <laughs> yeah. Today we're going to be looking at some tanks that we looked at before, but a little more in depth because these two, in particular, this one and that one, are special. Other than the fact that they both have frogs in them, and that is because these are fully functioning ecosystems. Each one has their own little set of organisms and everything, and it sustains itself. So unlike some of these other enclosures, you don't have to clean it out constantly and you know change the substrate and stuff like that. So I'll let Kevin talk about how he actually created both of these little environments, like what the process was like and what is needed to keep up this process. So tell us about it. Step one in creating it. Beer. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Write that down, write that down. I drank every single time I made a background. <laughs> so kids, if you, want to, <laughs> if you want to make an enclosure, don't. You can't. You have to be 21 to make your own. <laughs> so, step one is just materials and finding things I like. I'm a big pork bark fan, so you can see it in the background with both tanks as well as in the foreground of this one. Look at that zoom. I know, seriously, I have a professional cameraman over here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I use... Let me go home. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> hey, remember him from two episodes ago? Yeah. It's been lonely here. We're both still dumpy and white. <laughs> but I found some cool pieces of cork bark that were nice and flat, and I was like, oh, this would look really cool as like a wall piece. And then to fill in the other parts of the space in the background, I used... Um, great stuff, pond and stone, expansion foam. So, I basically made a huge mess every single time I did this. Of course. I spent like an hour cleaning up my previous one before you guys came here you three course. weeks ago. You can see like where the wood is that he put in. Here, on, on the side. side. Yeah. So it's like, you want to like the you wanna just go in? Go in. I'll go in too. Yeah, like the chunks of wood. Join me on this journey. All that gray and Into red the enclosure. painted sculpture. That's pretty cool. I like that. <laughs> so, and this one, I uh, took um, some paint that's reptile safe. People use it for dark frog tanks, which are a lot less hardy than uh, dumpy tree frogs. <laughs> and I dyed it different shades of grays and browns. And I just kept going over and over. So did you carve all of I that? I carved it all on, or most of it on Twitch. Yep. So. Oh yeah, we should put a link to that. Yeah, we can. Yeah, link right over there. You can I'm literally actually... go on Twitch and watch this happen. I've been still up, right? On yeah. a side note, we could also like take, this doesn't have to be in the episode, but just like, we could take a clip from his actual stream and put it in this video. Are you kidding? Yes. No. <laughs> Editor, Danny. Editor Danny, could you put in a clip of his uh, Twitch stream? Thank you. Silence. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, you carved all of this? Yep. So I carved that all using foam cutting any tools. Of that out, by the way. Excellent. Excellent. And then I proceeded to paint it, and then I would paint when I got home from work, slash midnight o'clock. Of course. And then. I would let it dry for the entirety of the next day while I slept and then went to work. And then when I got home again, I would add the next layer, either lighter or darker, depending on what I was going for. And so the background for this one, it technically I worked on it for about three weeks, but that's because I had to wait on a couple supplies and I got an idea of right after I started to paint it instead of doing what I did for the previous one, so I had to completely just stop what I was working on and then go, alright, we need these things now. Mm -hmm. And these plants in here are real? Yes. For the most part? Yep. So we have a nice little fern down there, a nice piece of pathos that was currently crushed by the frog, um, and a plant that I don't know the name of in the corner at the moment. So if you know the name of that plant, drop it in the comments. <laughs> and then the spider plant coming out of the middle. Giant, $4.99. Very cool. Giant, if you're listening, I eat your food. 
So this kind yeah. of enclosure is called a bioactive enclosure. I'm not Correct. sure if we've stated that yet. So what, what does that so, mean? Yeah, what goes into being a bioactive? So being bioactive. bioactive means that it is basically, like Helm said, its own ecosystem. It's completely self-sustaining. Um, so the only things besides just changing the water that I have to do in here is I have to mist because they need humidity. And then I have to feed the frog, who's mm -hmm. always ready to eat. Always ready to eat. And then I know what you're thinking. Frogs make waste. You'd be right. <laughs> and to combat that, I have actually, there's a better example in the other one, mm -hmm. um, a bunch of springtails and isopods that are made to eat rotting wood, leaves, plants, waste, anything like that. So really there's roly-poly in here. Yes, there are. There's a bunch of small little arthropod things running around in the soil that are keeping everything clean. Mm -hmm. Okay, I don't see any, but I uh, just know they're there. Well, they're very yeah. small. They're <laughs> tiny. Yeah. And you can get an idea of like what kind of stuff he puts in for the soil yeah. by looking at it down here. So, so got these balls. it's a mixture of, the bottom layer is bio balls. So they're little clay balls that help drainage. Mm. And then above that is a mixture of um, different types of mosses cocoa fiber, a little bit of wood chips, orchid bark, and extra pieces of sphagnum moss, which I do the scientific method of putting some in my hands and then just going like this. <laughs> and then that just breaks it down into nice little fluffy bits. Nice. And that helps keep everything, big variety, great way to keep humidity. Mm -hmm. And for what I do for, I typically do that for most of my Tropical reptiles, it's more based off of what percentage of each goes into which tank. So for these guys here, which they're both very tropical, they get a lot more of the, um, like the mosses and the, what's it called? Not the coat, the fiber, the, mm, the other one. Eco Earth, thank you. <laughs> I don't know it. And I, we have like five bags everywhere. And then in like the tortoises, or, and the ball pythons, there's a lot more wood chips and things like that to keep it a little bit more dry. Gotcha. And then the difference between this one and that one, that one has a bit more of a water feature uh, going to it. So this one is, would be considered a standard vivarium mm -hmm. because it has a lot of living things, but no water whatsoever outside of the water dish. Mm -hmm. This fro needs that to live. <laughs> and then the other tank is a palidarium. So that means it comes equipped with a full water feature too. So this one took significantly longer because A, I was learning how to do things on the way. B, it just took a lot longer because I needed to wait a lot more for materials. Um, and this is the home of our Vietnamese mossy frogs yeah. that we saw before. They're both right up there. Saw them about two weeks ago, three weeks ago when I first kidnapped <laughs> Calum and Danny. It's been so long, I can't remember. Mm -hmm. So I had it actually up and running for a little bit, mm -hmm. and then I stopped it, I broke it completely down, and then I restarted it because I didn't like how some of it was looking. Mm -hmm. But the background for this one took me a little bit longer because uh, I didn't have as much fancy tools, so I hand scraped everything, as well as I did a completely different method for the background. The background, and that one is all painted, this one, it's a layer of silicone with a lot of um, eco earth and coconut fiber just kind of slapped on there for the background. So it's a little bit more of a like the edge mm -hmm. um, zone of water as opposed to just painted rock. Yeah. And then the plants in here have really taken off. Uh, we have an aluminum plant right up front that started about this tall. And now it's spinning and going. We have pothos here and tucked in the corner back there, hiding from the light. Right next to the filter. We have a little bit of a peace lily right here. Uh, bronze wendith right there. And then moss and stuff as well. And here are some. So we got a couple of the roly polies these are some peach isopods that do the cleanup for the land portion in this tank because mm. i have to keep track of both the land keeping that set and, and then the, the water typically don't eat those 
Um, they would if they saw them, mm. but these guys hide under so much moss and they dig down and they're fed regularly, the frogs, mm -hmm. so they don't really, they don't have to worry about looking for food that much. Uh -huh. So that's part of the reason why they haven't been eaten yet. Gotcha. Fro loves to eat, so typically she will eat her isopods. <laughs> <laughs> and then... For the water cleanup. The water cleanup. Uh, let's see if there are any... Easy to see. Up oh, right there. We have that is an amino shrimp. And we uh, so I have a handful of different types of two. shrimp. Oh, there's there's two, two shrimps. Just a second. Right next to it. Am I imagining that? Yeah, yeah, they're both there. Uh, like oh, there. it's in there. <laughs> okay, yeah. So these guys are eating the algae and the waste in there. And to kind of help with the algae, there's also a snail in here somewhere. I don't quite know where, but there's a <laughs> snail in here somewhere. There is a snail. Let us know in the comments if you see the snail in the video. I haven't looked that hard for it because it's. I know it's in here somewhere. He's not going very far. No. So they're keeping the water clean and keeping algae down, and it's very important for that because these frogs like high tannin water. So that means they like a lot of decaying matter mm. in there. So it's finding the right zone of how much gross plants and stuff can I have in there without it looking super gross or making it too bad for them. So I hired a halfway decent cleanup crew for the water. <laughs> nice. So would you, if you could, try and create bioactive enclosures for every animal that you own? Honestly, if possible. if possible, I would still say no. Mm. So it very much depends on their conditions. Mm -hmm. Tropical animals, it's a lot easier to do because a lot of tropical plants don't have to worry about things as much. And with the water as well, that was annoying. But conditionally speaking, humidity is easy to keep, all that stuff. With things such as my aromastics, where they're primarily in the desert, it's a lot harder to maintain the amounts that the plants need. Plus, all these frogs eat bugs, so I don't have to worry about them going after the plants. And with the aromastics, he's gonna eat plants. So, that would be a lot more annoying to redo is constant plant changes. Mm -hmm. Plus, with other animals such as the fire skink, he has a couple of live plants. I like to go to Home Depot and buy the two dollars plants I could find <laughs> and I'll give them to the ones that are burrow or notorious for breaking them mm. and let them just tear it through it, break it down, and then I'll replace it in a little bit. Mm -hmm. But, but you do but, see positives at least yeah. for keeping these ones in right. the enclosure. And then the like the fire sink, he goes underground, he'll destroy they're known for destroying roots. Mm -hmm. Same with the aromastics, so they're gonna destroy it every aspect of the roots I pretty much making it insanely difficult for the plants to survive if i keep them just planted in and i don't make a false bottom for them very cool well i think the last feature we have to show off then is your little misting setup to keep the humidity high yep let's check that out got your standard rectifier in here i'm still working with the timing and stuff mm -hmm. so i haven't decided but i turn it on it pours fog in. And that way I can have it basically up the humidity without me doing spraying them constantly. Are you waiting to install the flashing lights and techno music still or um haven't decided yet. Mm -hmm. We're gonna kinda of wait to see what Fro thinks about it. Fair enough. She's got like she's very strong opinionated. Mm -hmm. So Is stripper pole going in there soon. <laughs> I mean, that was for the, eventually, if you come back, I was going <laughs> to have the stripper bowl in there, but, <laughs> spoiler alert. There you go. So that is a little look into bioactive enclosures, how to make them, how the animals like them. Yeah. It is, I will say, it is a lot more expensive than just getting a tank and filling it with substrate. It seems like it. Sure. But, it's more, it's like getting all the materials for a reptile. Mm -hmm. where it's expensive at first, but long term it's not as expensive. This was very expensive to set up, 
but for these guys, I might need to top off the water and toss them some crickets. And that's it. That's all the work I have to do in this entire tank. And for anybody who wants to keep something like this and keep their pets kind of in a more natural environment, this is pretty much as close as you're going to get to keeping your pet in a wild <laughs> environment. So yeah. I'm sure they appreciate it, although we can't ask. Do you like it? Damn it. No. It's gonna make that same joke. <laughs> no, we don't like it. Let us out of here. Yeah. Us too. Yeah, can we go? Sure, I guess so. Alright, I guess we're done here then. See you next week. Maybe. <laughs>